I'm thrilled to have been asked to have an exhibit here at AQS Quilt Week retrospecting the quilts that I have made over approximately the last 30 years. The first one that I'm standing in front of is the earliest quilt that I know of that I, we have in my possession in my family. This, I made this for my mother in a pro, about 1995. As I think you can tell from the fabrics, they're, they're retro rose and wedgwood blue. Nothing like I would choose now necessarily, but anyone who has lived through the late 80s and 90s and knows these colors, you know the calico prints like I do. Um, at the time, I had made a couple other quilts. Um, I, have, I have sewed all my life, I mean, since I was a young girl. So sewing was no big deal. Straight seams, zippers, you know, no, no pressure. Quilts, you know, it, it was utilitarian at the time. I was trying to make her a wall hanging, but I really wasn't trying to make it beautiful. Times change. So this, this is a log cabin pattern, and I bought the fabrics pretty much without ever drawing it up. We didn't have EQ where you can lay them out and see how they look. So when I got one of my blocks made, I thought, you know, that green log, that's awful. It's too dark, but I left it. I said, nope, I'm not going to go buy a different fabric and remake it. It is what it is. It was a poor choice, but it's done. <laughs> this is hand quilted. Uh, you can see I have the I'll show you the back. It's better. I was not a good hand quilter. I was just into the act of trying to finish this piece. The quilting was part of the process and it didn't matter to me that I left all the knots on the back side. In 2009, moving ahead a few years, I bought a long arm. I had dabbled a little bit with machine quilting on a domestic machine but I wasn't very good and what I knew from that process was that I wanted something big, much bigger. So I bought a Handy Quilter Fusion and started making quilts. I started a business. A couple years after that, I had taken a class with Karen K. Buckley on hand applique at a show. Um, although I had done a little bit of applique here and there, I thought, you know, I, I like this, I'm just not very good at it and it revolutionized the, my quilts and where they would eventually evolve because I truly love to, to do things by hand, the stitching by hand. So this quilt, the center block, is the block that came from her class. The rest of it uses her, her shapes, but it's my border. And <clears throat> this is probably one of the very first machine quilted quilts that I put in a show. I put in a couple of smaller local shows that, um, you know, I was, I was a newbie, but I had made a quilt two years before this in 2010 that a friend had said, hey, you ought to enter that in a show. I thought she said, you know, enter it in this show. So I went and I entered it in this show. Well, I entered it in the wrong one and well, I was hooked. It won a ribbon and the rest really is history. You know, I've, I've always had this competitive nature about me, and so I, I haven't stopped. I have always loved traditional patterns. Often I'll remake them using more modern fabrics. Maybe they're brighter. They're not the colonial Williamsburg blue and shades, you know, the Civil War prints that are very Americana, but I still like to honor the traditional designs. This Lone Star happens also to be a medallion style quilt, which is a, a very, I am a mathematician, I am an engineer, and I have always appreciated having things symmetrical and orderly. And so the medallion designs kind of fit that need within my brain. Um, this particular quilt, though it was made in 2011, I credit it as probably being one of my more successful and more well-known quilts. It's managed to make itself on the, on the cover of a, book, of a magazine. It made it into a book, which AQS published as a pattern. And I get more, you know, interested people. Where can I get this? I love this quilt. How did you do this? And so I, you know, I think that what began as really something very simple for me has blossomed into something very, very interesting to others. 
Um, maybe it's the colors. Maybe it's the, you know, the fact that I've tried to modernize it with the, the quilting and the designs in the fabrics, but it's, it surprised me, you know. Up until about 2015, most of my work was more centered around the piecing or the applique. That was an area that I personally felt very comfortable with. Um, and less so about the machine quilting. I, you notice, although I do very dense machine quilting, or did up until then, it was more about, I, I think I tried to conceal the quilting rather than have it show off. This, from the Bride's Trousseau, is my first competitive whole cloth quilt. And for me, this was a real branching out, stepping off point where I'm putting it out for the world and because all I have to show is the quilting itself. I was a little intimidated by doing it, um, but it was fun and it's kind of led to other whole cloth quilts that have been quite successful. So the, this quilt and the one that was done the following year, they're both on silk radiance fabric. They are symmetrical whole cloths, again, more in this medallion style, you know, things are very orderly and symmetrical and centered. Um, it, it is a 45 what degree wedge type symmetry, so it, there are eight identical sections as you go around. Um, by the time I got to this quilt, I was already really appreciating these fills. The very dense designs that utilize a marked grid to create. So the clam shells and the very small cross hatch pattern. Um, up in here we have another cross hatch. But the beauty of these type designs is that you can use them. In this case, they're stitched in a colored thread. So I have brought green, blue, and gold thread colors into this quilt very subtly. But they also pop all of these other elements that you really want to see on the quilt, whether that's the framework, the feathers, the, you know, even the little small elements like the circle that's on here, this teardrop, the center, everything is um, that you want to be positive space only becomes positive space because you've put negative space or dense stitching beside it. This quilt over here, called Ode to Spring, is, uses the same idea, different fills. I mean, this is, you know, who thought that a little spider web type design could help pop feathers, but it does. Um, this was the first quilt that I tried, this um, herring, it's a herringbone style fill, and it's tight, tiny matchstick lines that are done radially around it. There is another like um, checkerboard type grid that's filled, but it, both of these are popping these scrolls that are in here, the feathers. Um, and in the case of this quilt, it, all, it has some organic elements that are supposed to have reminded me of spring. It was designed during the depths of the snowiest winter I can remember in Maine, not so long ago. So, you know, there are flowers and the big flower in the middle and the dragonflies. Here's another version of this grid-based fill. It's a clamshell that has a fan style dense fill that I stitched out in a very fine silk thread. But you see everything else because of it. So now I'm here with what is almost my most recent quilt. One, my, my truly most recent one just debuted yesterday at a different show, but this one, this is from last year, 2018, and it is called My Secret Garden. This quilt, it began, like some, sometimes my quilts do begin, where I, I really just need to get into my studio and peace. I, I don't want to have, I don't always have a plan going into it, so I pieced out, I think, 36 of these log cabin blocks. It was a traditional design. Like I said before, I do like to honor these traditional patterns and then bring them into the modern realm with a variety of things, this case being applique. So I pieced up these blocks using the bright pinks and orange prints 
and a collection of different silk radiance fabrics. These silk sections are actually about four different color fabrics, varying from an ivory to a white to a champagne. I had scraps. <laughs> so that's where this started. But I knew that a log cabin quilt was not going to be competitive, and this was going to be a competition quilt. So I had to take it to the next step. I designed the applique. It's all original, the designs, starting with the blocks and pulling out what were my favorite pink and orange flowers. I have a fairly extensive garden at home that, of perennials that blooms all summer, and so these are some that, that I like to see. Um, the applique on this is all prepared with a turned edge. It's hand stitched on and it's become something that I just love to do. And I don't mind that it takes longer. I've been asked, well, why don't you do it on machine? It would be faster. It might be, but it wouldn't be done as well as I want to see. And honestly, it's all about the journey. It's about enjoying what you do. But let's talk about the quilting because that's that's what I like. I really have gotten into the realm where I, I have to think about both things when I design a quilt now. And, you know, five years before this was made, I didn't, I didn't think that way in the process quite so much. So this particular quilt, um, I wanted it to look as though you were peering through a wrought iron fence, looking into my garden, see what I see. And so I designed this um, quilting that's on here to somewhat resemble a wrought iron fence. I didn't want it, you know, so blatant as to be stitched in black, but, you know, so these scrolls, I had a little jig, a template that was approximately like this triangle, and it was made out of template plastic, and I would trace that design on there with a water-soluble blue pen. I would invert it and trace the other one. So all of this was marked before I started. Um, this too. Anything that has that scroll pattern was done that way. This quilting on this is very dense. What you don't see until you're up here is that much of this is done in a blue thread. Blue. Blue seems like an odd choice, but it's, you know, from the close-up, you notice that it really ties into the, what is the accent color on this? My pop color, as I call it. It's the aqua or the teal. And so for me to go and stitch these feathers in blue and the tiny matchstick quilting that, that is making them pop in a blue is really trying to tie you into this pop color that's on here. It's, it's in the framework, it's in this border, and it's in these little berries. So the quilt is finished with, um, I like to say, I, I don't ever finish a, a binding with something overly simple. It, I don't do simple. <laughs> I'm not being boastful, but I don't know how to do simple and in all my life never have. <laughs> if there's a hard way, I'm going to do it twice. But this is a scalloped piped binding and, and it has finished with this nice little layer of hand, hand couch satin embroidery thread just because. I hope you have enjoyed seeing my retrospective exhibit of what I have made for quilts over the last 25 or 30 years. Um, I teach at various places. I'd love to have you in one of my classes, maybe AQS Grand Rapids. <laughs> have a great day.